Welcome to That's Camellia Podcast. Hey, we're going to unpack some of those questions that you have. We're going to interview some guests and let's have a conversation. Come on, enjoy the show. Welcome back to That's Camellia Podcast. Oh, everyone, I have with me today Mama Vegas, also known as Eris Potts. She is a fellow podcaster over the Mama Vegas show. And let me tell you, her mission is to provide a platform that becomes a vibrant canvas for diverse and relatable stories. She aims to create a welcoming space where entrepreneurs and talent can share their journeys and adding layers to the rich tapestry of our human experiences. Her goal is to have a haven of authenticity and while amplifying the voices that often go unheard. The Mama Vegas Show is committed to showcasing the real and raw moments that make our stories uniquely beautiful. So join me listening to this conversation as me and Eris Potts, we build our connection while also sharing you, being authentic and transparent ourselves to foster the inspiration and continue this platform that resonates with the heartbeat of our shared humanity and I want to add our community. Mama Vegas, Eris Potts, girl, welcome to the That's Camellia podcast. Thank you, Camellia, for having me on. I am super excited to be a part of your platform. And thank you to your listeners for joining in and um, listening to us tonight, today. Thank you so much. Because you know what I love about your whole mission? It's about yes. the, the transparent, authentic stories that we have. Because I believe that our transparent stories, that's what heals people. That's what helps people. Absolutely. Not, not, not the one that we fabricate and, 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 and show with our mask, you know, because we all have this mask that we put on, right? right but when right. we can take that mask off and say, hey, this is, this is what it is. This is what it is. So yeah. I love your mission. The raw and true us. I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's who we are. And and no matter how we dress it up, we're going to always be who we are. So I'd rather just wear that crown and wear that that uh, those accessories of self and authenticity. Yeah. You know what? I think that's, and that ties in a good segue to what we're talking about this month. We're talking about our mental health and um, realizing that what we have on, all our accessories, whether we have them or we don't have, it is who we are. Right. And and regardless of what we have on, it does not negate our value or our self-worth. I, I agree. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about what you think or what is your definition of self-worth? Um, self-worth, I think, um, is a value of, like you said, your authentic self, who you are, um, the good, bad, and the ugly, um, and knowing your worth, right? Making sure mm -hmm. that you don't dim your light or, or um, shared your cloth for anyone else. Um, know who you are and stand tall and firm in that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And be confident in that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be confident, confident in that. Yes, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So tell me about when we, I've been talking about um, that because this is Mental Health Month, yes. and I wanted to really encourage our listeners to let them know about things, factors that can influence our self worth, whether it's childhood experiences, yes. whether it's that dreaded oh my goodness, dare I say it, comparison thief, yes, yes, our achievements failures, relationships, those like five things to me, and also self-perception, per, um, Yes, those absolutely. things, they can craft and, and shape our self-worth if we are not careful. Absolutely. So tell me, out of those kind of five, I know that's a lot, childhood experiences, social comparisons, achievement, failures, relationships, self-perception, I know I've kind of went through all of those in my life. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that I think that all of those have um, kind of affected me, you know, 
um, in my worth, knowing my worth. I think that we all have trouble or I'm not sure if we all go through that, but I know that for a period of time, I questioned my self-worth and I think it was a circumstantial to my environment, if that makes sense, the things that I was going through, um, yeah, the does. people I were dealing with um, and just life in itself, right? Lifing me. And, you know, um, I think that, you know, that also, like you said, ties into our mental health, right? Because then it all starts to affect that one thing. Um, our, our self-worth, um, knowing who we are, the environment that we have. I think it all kind of ties in to breaking down to our, our mental health and, and that encourages our self-worth, right? If we don't think much of ourselves, if we don't take care of our personal well-being, um, how good are we for other people? Yeah, that's and, we, and you know what? I think sometimes we forget that. I think mm-hmm. too, as moms, that's one of our things, boy. We, that's one of our casualties. I mean, we're so used to taking care of our children and our husbands and our families that sometimes we just get pushed ourselves. We just yeah. get pushed aside to the back until we can't, until our bodies say, uh, 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 my turn. Yeah, and and absolutely. that's what we don't want. Don't yeah. want. Uh, so you know, in this day and time, social comparisons is something that I call it a thief. Because comparison is a thief. It will rob you because it always makes you forget about what's in your own lane because you're mm-hmm. too busy looking at, you know, oh, look, look what she's doing. Yeah. Oh, How can I get she, that? Yeah. What? And she woke up like that? No, she did not. No, right, they right. did not. No. <laughs> no, they did not. They didn't. <laughs> and, that, you know, not. that's the, pre- I think that's what it is, right? We see um, the the after of mm-hmm. everything, right? And nobody knows what it takes to get there. And so, like you said, that social comparison, that um, um, imposter syndrome, right? It's yes. an imposter syndrome. We we see it, we want it, and that's what we, in that moment, right? We become an imposter of that. And the imposter of ourselves, we, we forget who we are because we start to latch onto other people's visions and ideas and what they have. And sometimes we compare it because it's not happening as fast for us. Mm-hmm. I think that's the mm-hmm. biggest thing, right? Well, well, why is it happening so fast for them and not for me? We're doing the same thing, but everybody's recipe is different. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Because you know what? The the biggest thing is if you see somebody doing something that you want to do. Yeah. My my thing is go ask them. And, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and if they're if they're gracious and humble enough to tell you exactly what they're doing, doing, hey, keep doing it until you get the same results. But Absolutely. don't get stuck to start comparing yourself. Well, like just like you said, it's not happening fast enough. Hey, you don't know how long they've been doing that. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't know how many pictures they had to take to get the right one. Yeah, absolutely. Because everybody won't share their struggle. They'll share their success. We won't always get everybody's oh, struggle. Oh, and amen. so we and so we think that it's just it just happened right away. Because, again, that authenticity, you know, being able to share the beginning to the end. And not everyone is vulnerable enough to do that. And so we only see their cheers and not their tears uh, in the process. Mm, that is so good. Share the successes and not the struggle. And to me, the healing part is when you share your struggle, because Absolutely. that's where we get stuck. We think that oh, I'm, I'm doing it wrong. I'm yeah. in this thing by myself. No one else knows what I'm going through. And I promise you, we all know what you're going through. Absolutely. And I think that more people are are more relatable to to life things that happen to us and we are so afraid that we're going to be judged but I've come to find out that doing especially with doing podcasting that somebody out there has a say not the same exact story but a familiar story and they've been waiting to talk to someone else that they can relate to that they can um, get encouragement from because they've they've walked that walk with them Um, and I think that a lot of people have shame And Mm -hmm. so they don't share those things. I mean, like childhood traumas or even bad marriages or, you know, no one, Mm -hmm. no one wants to talk about those failed things. Um, And that creates us. A lot of that makes us who we are. I've had a failed marriage. Um, I've dealt with domestic violence. I've dealt with it as a child um, and seeing that in the pattern and the cycles. Um, But it didn't define me. It didn't right. define me. Um, and I think that, like you said, we have to find our self-worth in situations. I always tell my children, um, be the teacher, not the lesson. I was a lesson, you be the teacher. And uh, I think that we have to take our experiences, like you said, and we have to not really necessarily just teach other people, but help them grow and see that there is a past that point and and help them find their worth you know help them remember who they are sometimes we need a reminder mm, to get that us is back good. on track yeah yeah you do you do and and 
That is really good. Be the teacher, not the lesson. That's um, Tell me about that. Because I have my great aunt used to tell me that borrowed sense is better than bought sense. And it almost sounds like that's the same thing. That Because I, I'm, I'm, I will be the one to raise my hand. If you want to give me some wisdom, I'm going to take it. Yeah, I'm going to take it. I'd rather, I'd rather take some borrowed wisdom versus having to pay this expensive lesson I might end up teaching myself. Yeah. So if you could tell me an easier way. So tell me about that. You say you t- tell your kids, be the teacher and not the lesson and how you, how that kind of came into you not letting what you, your childhood trauma defined you. Yeah. I think that um, when I say that is that if, it happens when you make a mistake in something. Um, you learn from it, right? You don't continue to make the same mistake because you've already learned from that. You don't continue to give yourself a lesson on something that you should have grown from or that you can grow from or that someone is helping you grow from. So when I say be the teacher, not the lesson is learn from things grow from it, take advice, and then go and teach it. Don't repeat the same thing over and over and allow yourself to get trapped into something, become a victim. Be the teacher. Show people that it was a lesson that you learned from and teach and show others how to overcome that. Oh, that's good. That's really good. That's a powerful, that's a powerful life skill. Yeah. Eris. That's a, that's a life skill. So with um, growing, going from things that happen in our life and not letting it define us. Do you have like af- af- affirmations that you say to yourself um, to, to negate the, the negative self-talk that sometimes comes in? Um, I, the things that I say to myself is that um, my past um, does not predict my future. I continue to tell my children the same thing. Don't let your past make your present decisions. Um, that's the biggest one that I live off of is I won't let my past fears dictate my future decisions that could be successful, that could be of love, that can be of growth, that can be a friendship because of things that have failed in my past. I will not let those fears stop me from being successful in other ways in my future. So I always tell myself, do not let my past make decisions for my future. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good to keep. Look, that's yeah. good to keep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, and, that, I, and I remind myself that, right? Because we, even sometimes we get trapped and we get caught in our old um, mindset sometimes when things mm-hmm. don't go a certain way. And I have to remind myself that, you know, don't let past um, experiences in life, um, things from your past dictate the future. Because sometimes we will get afraid and, and we get comfortable and then we won't go for things because of the past and we remember what happened before. And right. I don't ever want to be that way. Um, I, I went back to film school at 42 years old, um, started a podcast because I said I can no longer allow my fear of being too old to do this or what other people will say for me to go back to school. So, old, you know, in my older years, stop me from being successful because I know that I'm here to be used as a vessel for something else. My 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 message is greater. Um, my mission is greater, my journey is greater than the fears. I know that on the other side of those fears is so much success. Oh, that is good. That is good. And that's the testimony right there is yeah. that the, the fear that I'm too old to do this. Yeah, You're never too old. That's how we keep our brain young, yes. <laughs> learning new things. Yes, You got to yes. continue to learn new things. <laughs> if you don't give your brain, your body something to do, guess what? It's going to stop working. There's no Absolutely. need to keep working, right? Absolutely. It's on vacation. So, yes. Right, right, <laughs> right. So so the things that you're that you're talking about, that to me, those are strategies to improve our self-worth that yeah. directly impact our mental health. Yeah. I, what about um, positive influences around you? Um, my positive influences around me are my children. They are mm-hmm. um, everything to me. Um, my youngest daughter. Um, my youngest baby, she's eight. Um, she is probably, um, I tell people she's my lifesaver. Mm. And, um, what I mean by that is that I have three older children, they're adult children. Then I have a, a younger child and my older children, um, I was younger and I went through things with them. They seen so much. And again, I was not as strong as I am in my older years, but when mm-hmm. I had this daughter, 
it was something about that moment, that time, that birth. I don't know what God clicked in my head and I she saved me. I have been such the person I'm supposed to be. Um, I came out of that rut of who I was because of my circumstances when I gave birth to her. Um, it was like I was reborn. So I would say uh, my children have been my most positive um, and most um, inspirational um, things in my life, beings in my life, parts of my life, uh, because they keep me going. Um, even as old as they are, I know they still, if that sounds crazy, they still look to me to give them advice, to look to me to be successful so they know it's okay. Um, I think all of our children are like that no matter how old they get. And I don't ever want to disappoint my children ever. I think I've done that before in the past, not on purpose um, because life happened, um, mm -hmm. but I don't ever want to do that again. And the hardest thing to do, I think, is self-reflection. Um, it's such mm -hmm. a, a, a big pill to swallow because for self-reflection to me, you have to be able to look at everything, not just the things you want to see, but everything you have to see mm -hmm. um, in order to grow. And um, self-reflection is so uh, beneficial to us and our mental health because we have to reflect on things to know what we're growing from and where mm -hmm. we're going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's also too, um, self-reflection is to me is like a hub of where those negative thoughts rest. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and you have to be able to it takes courage right yeah. it takes courage to truly confront who you are Absolutely. i mean well you, you you take the mask off and i mean it's just me and you in this mirror so let yeah. me tell you i mean who are you who who are you really and it's not based on the things that we do the thing the assets that we have it's not right. based on our job our kids but who are you so it looks like when you said that you were reborn when you had your youngest daughter that it was more like an epiphany of like now now this is where life is this is where yeah. it starts yeah because you, you you and see when you have kids younger like i did when you have kids younger i mean i taught my oldest daughter how to survive i mean yeah i was i was growing i was you know i was i was you know getting older and trying to raise her at the same time as a single parent so it was i was teaching her how to survive i wasn't teaching her all the other stuff that that I've learned now. No, you were growing my, up with her. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I was. I grew right. up so, with my kids. Yes, yes. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah, it, and it's different. So I could definitely tell you, it's different from my my thirty three year old versus my fifteen year old because my fifteen year old came at a season in my life where hey, I'm I'm good. Right. I'm good. But yeah. that thirty three. Oh no, yeah. I'm I'm teaching her how to ins and out, how to defend herself, how to go out there and get it, how to make. I mean, yes, <laughs> yes. Because you were in survival mode, you know. And right. like you said, it's different right. phases in our life. And when right. in survival mode, whoever's around you, you're teaching them to survive just like you. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, with with time comes peace, and with time comes grace, and with time comes clarity um, in life and um, it takes us a while to get there. I think, you know, I always tell my kids that they always say, you know, I'm just a kid. And, and I've seen a TikTok. I think it was a TikTok. And this lady was talking to her mom and she said, I'm so sorry for how I treated you, how mean I was to you as a teenager and growing up, because I had to realize that this is your first time at this thing called life too. Just because mm -hmm. you're older than me, you're still going through mm -hmm. this one time around as well. And right. I think that we have to give each other grace and each grace. other, uh, mm -hmm. you know, mercy in that, that we are all on the same trip. Just because you're a little further ahead than me, we're still on the same trip. I've never been mm -hmm. here. You've never been here. Mm -hmm. And so navigating life is 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 hard and navigating it um, with peace and with mind. And in this day and age is hard as well. Um, and staying grounded is hard, you know, and staying true to yourself, especially with the social media and all the flashy things and all the lifestyles. And you can become a social media star in five minutes just by doing this. It's hard to stay grounded and authentic to who you are mm -hmm. and not want to cross over to be like someone else. And and staying true to yourself is so important. It's so important. So you said something. You're right. It is hard. It, it's almost like um, when you when you crave when, when you crave sweets or something. You just have to have it. You just have yeah. to have it. And that's a, a lot what I think of when I think of social media because 
It, you have to, I, hey, I will put myself on a timer. You got 30 minutes and that's it. When that timer goes off, put that phone down. That's enough of that. Yeah. Because it will just draw you in and t- you just be, become this sponge of all of this stuff. When you have goals, mm-hmm. you have aspirations that you want to do. Well, guess what? The same people that you're watching, I promise you, they have time slot at that time. I'm going to do it this amount of time. And after this, I'm going to go and do something else. I mean, you have to prioritize your time and make yourself realize that you are enough and you are worth the time taken to be by yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Agree. I think that you have to do um, personal well-being, like you said, personal well-being and recognize when you need to take a break when you, and make sure you always are involved in activities that you enjoy and allowing yourself to rest and recharge. Uh, I think it's so important to do that for yourself, um, to not get caught up. And like you said, put the phone down. If you get mm-hmm. caught up in those whirlwinds of wanting to be, you know, a <laughs> lot of, you know, you want that, you want to be this, you want to be that, you find yourself on Carvana doing an application for a BMW because you just see somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked it. easy. <laughs> and it and looked easy. Be, I mean, it, what they did tell you is that they have perfect credit. And you, right. and, and so their interest rate is different than what yours right. would be. So, yeah. <laughs> So you don't, you don't see all that back stuff. You don't see yes. that, right? Yes, right. yes. And you have to grow your mindset, right, to achieve your mm-hmm. goals. You know, we have to grow our mindset. We have to and embrace our challenges and know that everybody has them and just be persistent in, in the face of setbacks. You know, just remember yeah. what why you started. When you think about quitting, remember why you started. Yeah, you got to know your why and you got to yeah. be mindful of your why. What is your why? Everybody's why is not the same. And I think that's that was key to what you said. You have to keep your goals. What whatever is your your thing? What is right. your mission? Just like you clearly defined yours on your site. Whatever your mission is, that is just that's all you need to be doing. Everything Absolutely. else, see, everything else is a distraction. And I think that that's where we can key in when we're talking about mental health. When we get when we allow too much of those distractions in our life, it will cost you you time. Yes. Which is one currency we all have the same amount of, but we don't use it the same way. That's right. And it's so fleeting. We think we have so much, but it's oh. so fleeting. It's so yeah. fleeting. Um, the time no and precious, knows. like you said, no one knows because we no all get so knows. caught up. I was mm-hmm. talking to one of my friends the other day. We've been friends since uh, junior high school and both of our oldest daughters are turning 26. And I said, I remember when we were 26. Yeah. And life doesn't stop rolling because you have a situation. Life doesn't stop rolling because you have a problem or you get stuck. And I think that we have to remember that we cannot get stuck in a rut because life just keeps going. It just keeps yeah. going. And we have to remember to live, to live, yeah. to not just be alive, but to live. So that's good. So how do you not get stuck in a rut? How do you um, get, uh, and even if you are, how do you get unstuck? Um, I think that when I get in, in a rut about something, I um, kind of don't get discouraged by it, but try to analyze what went wrong, kind of try to regroup myself and figure it out and, and try to have a strategy to get myself out of that. Because any, any rut that I get in, I can get myself out of, I have to take the time to, um, to figure out what, it, what got me there. Like I said, taking those breaks, take, having mindful um, moments with myself and just prioritizing things. Cause sometimes we get in a rut because we're doing too much. And then we just mm-hmm. say, forget it. I'm not doing anything. Um, or it could even be a medical thing. I just, I, when we get in a rut, you just, again, remind yourself why you started and, and do whatever you can to get yourself out of that. If you have to take a break and walk away from a project or walk away from what you're doing or, or go take a, a meditation class or go on a nature walk or even just watch a movie. I think that we just have to take a moment, take a moment mm-hmm. to get out of a rut. Um, I know that if I keep thinking about things and thinking about it and thinking about it, sometimes I'm like, oh, my God, my stomach is hurting. My head is hurting. I'm having an anxiety attack. I'm like, you're not helping yourself by sitting here overthinking. Right, you know? right. That, and that's what that is. It's, it becomes this funnel of negative thoughts. Yes, yes. And, and then you keep creating scenarios of how it can get worse. And oh, I think and that we, we do that all day long. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, yes, we do. You know, because we think the worst so we can 
not worry. We think of the worst so we can already have a plan how to figure it out. Right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so we yeah, can already have the plan. Happens, right. If yes. A happens, I got this going. If B yeah. happens, I got I know what to do here. And if C happens, yeah, I gotta work around on that. See, yeah, I mean, we're not letting them sneak up on us, right? We right. we don't have an A, B, C, D all the way up to the end of the alphabet. You know, it's always having the plan B, plan C, plan B, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I truly agree that that's our thing that we always try to be ahead of ourselves. <laughs> try to be ahead of ourselves. Yeah. And yeah, I think those are very good um, activities for to just enhance our our self-worth. Like you said, you can't if you're stuck, you can't get unstuck by reminding yourself about what your why is. You know, another thing that I do um, when I get stuck or where I just get into this like drought was what I want to call it to where I feel like I'm overwhelmed is I go volunteer. I go volunteer somewhere. I mean, it just, it fills up these endorphins and this dor- dopamine in my body to where helping someone else gives me a sense of purpose and increases my feelings of, of self-worth and, and self-worth of who I am and my Absolutely. value when Absolutely. I'm able to stop thinking about myself and go help someone else. It's, Absolutely. It's always like one of the secret weapons that I use that if I am get stuck somewhere, I'm going to go find some type of community activity yeah. that I can go and I can go help someone else. Because then it cleared to me what it does for me is it clears my mind. It's like, okay, yeah. I'm not, no, no longer thinking about me. If I go to yeah. a nursing home, I know I need to, let me bring some socks or maybe some blankets, you know, just talk to the other people there because I've learned, you know, we think our life is bad. I yeah. mean- Somebody will take your hand and win with it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so that that <laughs> that's right. right. Okay. <laughs> it, it ain't as bad as, as as I think it is. No, um, and I think that another thing that we can do to get out of a rut. You know, I have a friend. She's an author. She's a self publisher, and she is big on journaling. She is yep. big on journaling, and she has one thing she told me is that don't be afraid to journal. A lot of people, even when we're writing in a book to ourselves, she says we are afraid to put our own thoughts down because we forget that the only person that's going to go back and read it is us. Mm-hmm. And she says that journaling is the most vulnerable moments you can have with yourself and i truly agree i think that's another way to get out of a rut is to just put it all out there get it off your heart get it off your chest right right i definitely agree with the journaling piece because um as an author myself um it started with journaling it started with journaling where i had to get my first husband um died of stomach cancer and I was I 30 at the time. Thank you so much. I was 30 at the time. So I didn't I didn't have a support system where there were other 30 year olds who still wanted to get married. I mean, yeah. and, and I felt all alone and by myself. So I had to, like you said, I had to get it off my heart, out of my head and put it on paper. But as I started journaling, oh, writing down, just being truthful with myself, because again, like your friend said, I'm the only one who's going to read this. this. I mean, this was me. I needed to get get it out of me. So yeah. it wouldn't keep affecting my mood, my 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 view of life, my attitude. So it's key. I think journaling is huge. That's something that I use with some of my clients, my life coaching clients. It's, it's we start with journaling, grateful journaling. Let's yeah. let's just write down a couple of things because it shifts your focus from negative to positive. Absolutely. And I think when you can also see your vision on paper in front of you, sometimes we think things and we don't when we see it on paper, even if it's written down, the vision can be much clearer for us because sometimes our own mind will get us, right? But when we write it down, we're clear with our thoughts, we're clear with our intentions, we're clear with our plans. Sometimes it's easier for us to follow that that roadmap that we created for ourselves. Oh, yes. Pen and paper is, I, I'm, I'm still a book person. I like when I, I'm a, I'm, my husband calls me a book snob, but I like a book in my hand. I, I like to feel the pages, you know, move with between my fingers and stuff. So I am real ever since ever since that happened with my first husband, journaling has been my out of yeah, what I would yeah, do. Journaling yeah. and just going to escape reading a book. My grandma used to tell me, Eris, that reading a book is the cheapest way to go on vacation. I said, oh. I didn't oh, believe yeah. her until I started reading. I was like, oh my yeah. gosh. 
<laughs> my sister is the same way. When we were younger, she loved to read books and she would say that it takes a very creative imagination. She said, I could sit here and I could each scene, I could picture the characters and the yes. scenes and I could smell the environment. And my sister would just get caught up in a book and yes. I mean, for hours and hours. And then she'd just read a whole series and she'd say, it's like watching a movie and you create the characters. Ah, I love it. Yes. I love it. <laughs> My next book, I should let your sister read it. You oh, yes. It. Uh -huh. She's a bookworm. Yes, yes, yes. She loves it. She loves it. Yes. That is amazing. That is amazing. But that is exactly what my grandma said. She said, it's the quickest way. She said, you know what else? That's where the secrets are. When people want to give you some wisdom, a lot of times they put it in a book. Yeah. But yeah. there's a lot of people that do not read. Did you know that? Yeah. They're right. Yeah. They're, they're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize that, Erin, until I became an author. When I became an author, that's when I realized how much or the lack of that people actually read books. I thought yeah. because, I mean, one, I love reading books that it, that was just normal, but it and is everybody not normal. It, right? yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. But that's part of something that that's my mindful meditation that I use to to help my self worth and my mental health. I mean, I love to just go whatever book that I'm reading. I love to just take it and remove myself from the whole atmosphere of where I am and just dive in to what I'm reading. Yeah, I'm with that with my scripts. I could just once I'm in my mind, I get that paper and I'm like, oh, here I, I've created this whole script. I'm ready. I'm ready to go with it. I think that, like you said, writing is such an outlet because once I get started, I can't stop or I'm like, oh, my God, I've gotten that far. I've done that much. I just like you said, I wish more people would see the peace in reading and the peace in writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so much peace in it. It's so much peace in it. Um, and I think that in a professional realm, you know, like with, you know, mental health is so crucial for us to be for productivity and creativity and effective leadership, right? Being able to manage our stress and maintain focus and stay motivated, but not just in the career, but in life, you know, just being able to do all of those things. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. Um, and for me, I think it involves just setting boundaries to myself to mm -hmm. prevent a burnout. Um, you know, and seeking support when I need it, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and understanding that everything that comes my way, I don't have to take, I don't have to try to tackle it. I don't, I don't have a cape and I don't have an ash on my chest and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. have to. Yeah. Learning how to say no. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. It took me a long time because no was a mean word for a long time to me to say to people. No meant I didn't love you. No mean that I didn't care. No meant, mm -hmm. you know, okay. no was a bad word. And mm -hmm. um, I think, like you said, we have, it's okay to say no and say yes to self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to, that's a, that's a learned skill that you have to start doing, especially when you're not used to it. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, it you're not used to it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it hurts you. The first couple of times you said it hurts you more. Than, than saying, than the person that you're giving the no to. But the more you keep on practicing and saying it, you say, nope, nope, no, I'm, mm -mm, that's not going to work for me. That, that doesn't work for me. And um, it's okay. I, and uh, yeah, right. And and uh, what I used to tell, I tell it, I'll just say that today. I'm not moved. I'm, and some people say unbothered. I'm just, mm -mm, it just, <laughs> I, it, it's, it's no, yeah, I'm not moved. It's just, <laughs> no, not moved not moved about it I, I just learned in the season that I'm in to love myself more absolutely love myself more than to have to deal with all the other stuff that comes with saying yes to something to that could very well be a distraction and taking me off of my mission and making it longer for me to reach my why it because I'm pushing my why back just to help you with something that's not an emergency it's, Absolutely. <laughs> I need to give you time to figure it out. Figure it out. You'll you'll be all right. And you'll, you'll get be it. all right. Yeah, <laughs> you'll get it. Yes. <laughs> you'll definitely get it. You'll definitely get it. So, Aries, um, another thing before we conclude, what I wanted to talk about is when when we're talking about our activities and and strategies that we we've been talking about on how to improve your self work and to be mindful of your self-work. It's a gradual process that we would agree that, yeah. that you, this journey that we, this journey that we're on. 
and how yeah. we treat ourselves is important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and making sure that we prioritize ourselves. um, and treat yourself the way you want other people. You want to treat other people. Cause you know that people always say, treat people how you want to be treated, treat yourself, how you want to treat other people. If That's very good. If, especially if you're a people pleaser, treat yourself exactly how you would treat someone else. Don't, don't downplay yourself and don't mistreat yourself. Treat yourself. And don't dim your light. Yes. And That's don't exactly dim right. your light. And, and remember to remember to reflect on the lessons learned. It is mm -hmm. okay. So you can be the teacher. I like that. Be the teacher and not the student. <laughs> yes, yes. Be the teacher. <laughs> yes, yes. And I like that because you know what? You you learn these life lessons. You learn from your mistakes, like you said. You grow from it. You get that advice and then you teach it. So you're yeah. not only just giving somebody a piece of fish, you're showing them how to fish. Yes, right. So now that I learned how to fish, let me show you how you can fish. That way you ain't got to come back over here and ask me for my stuff, right? <laughs> right. And then it creates a healing bridge, right? Because it's a, ah, it's a hand good. of healing, a hand mm -hmm. of healing, a hand of healing. And, and I think that we need more of those, those, those healing bridges and those comforting hands. Um, like you said, it, it, don't be the, don't be the lesson, you know, you have to be the teacher. You have to be, and, and it will be the lesson a couple of times in life, but you shouldn't always be the lesson. You should not right. take a lesson. Yeah. Right. Because you'll get tired of taking those lessons. You'll be like, yeah. oh, how many times am I going to take this same thing? You become a valedictorian of it. I tell yes. you. <laughs> yeah. and that's not what you want. Look, that's not no. that's not the degree you want, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not at all. That's not at all we want. You know, I think that, you know, and like you said, remember to practice gratitude with yourself, you know, yeah. practice gratitude mm -hmm. with yourself because I don't know who else you can be more grateful for than yourself. And what you have and what you can offer to the world. So many people don't know how powerful they are just themselves. Yeah, yeah, they don't. They don't because they got in the practice of dimming the light of them just yeah. because of who they're around. Yeah. But when you incorporate just, like you said, positive practices and then having a good support system, right? Absolutely. A support system around you to, to keep you healthy and mindful within your mental and your self-worth. It, yeah. It's an overall journey and a process. It's important. I think is I don't think it just takes a village to, to raise children. It takes a village to live um, mm. in this world. You know, um, a, a lonely space is, is, is not always the best space and no one wants to have a lonely space. Um, and I think sometimes we create those for ourselves because we don't wanna let people in, but you have to allow yourself to have a support system and, and the support system, it won't always be the positive things. And people have to understand, just like with a child, you have to give the good and the bad. And sometimes we don't want to hear things. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you have to. The support system isn't always going to cheer you on and tell you the good things. A, a real support system, a good support system is going to say, you messing up. Or you right. need to not, you know, they're going to have your back through the good mm -hmm. and the bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. And you don't, you don't want somebody, you don't, you don't need a yes man. No, no, I, I don't need a hype person to, to just hype me up all the time because I know I am not perfect. I am not doing it right all the time. No, ma'am. No, right. ma'am. But I need you to be able to pull me aside and say, yeah, you out of order. That yeah. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need you to get, get that together. Help me check me, you know, help me check me. And and what's wrong with that? And I think a lot of people don't have those type of support systems. And you say, like, like you said, those yes men, that yes men. And then you get to a corner when you're all alone and they've yes you to pieces. And then there's mm -hmm. nobody there to help you put you back together. So right. I, I don't want a yes. I want, I want a support system that is going to give me the good, the bad, and the ugly and be there for me when I fall, when I jump, when I hop, when I skip. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. I think that's how we go through life. We develop. We, we develop this support system and we accept the neck. We, we accept that criticism because if the criticism is coming from a great, from, from one of your friends of your support system, you need that. Right. Cause you need right. somebody to, to say, like you said, help me check me. Who, who else is going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> who else is going to do it? Strive you know? with me. Let's create something better together. Strive with me, you know, strive mm -hmm. and thrive with me and be encouraged mm -hmm. with me. That's good. Oh, that's good. 
Well, oh my goodness, we are over. To, we are coming to an end. No worries. That was a great conversation. We'll have more to come, I'm sure. <laughs> we sure will. Mama Vegas, please tell our listeners where they can find you. And I'm going to have your information on the no- show notes of this show. So tell our li- listeners where we can find you and your mission and support you. Absolutely. Well, you can find me uh, at the Mama Vegas Show.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mama Vegas, the Mama Vegas Show, um, YouTube, Mama Vegas, Podbean, the Mama Vegas Show.com, uh, dot Podbean.com. Um, reach out. Um, Contact me. I would love to talk with you guys. I would love to have some entrepreneurs on. I know that we'll be having you on in a couple of weeks, so you'll be returning the favor. So you guys yep. stay tuned. Um, we'll make sure you get that date out um, where we'll be having a conversation on the Mama Vegas show. So again, uh, mamavegas.com at Mama Vegas. You can reach me on all platforms. It's the Mama Vegas show. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I look forward to it, um, to hearing the responses from everyone and um, connecting with you again. And you guys, until next time, I you, you continue to live with passion and purpose. All righty. Thank you so much. All right. That's all we have for today. Join me next time on That's Camellia Podcast where we're going to continue our conversations. Make it a great day.